Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. By now, many of you have heard, undoubtedly, that uh, there's a judge that has come out strongly against Judge Annalisa Torres, who, of course, uh, ruled on the SEC v. Ripple case, declaring that XRP itself is not a security. And I'm paraphrasing here. Judge Torres came to the conclusion because she stated that XRP does not embody the requirements of the Howey test, and so thus it obviously could not be a security. Well, there's a separate lawsuit going on in which a judge uh, just verbally ripped Judge Torres's perspective to shreds, but intellectually, I don't think he did such a hot job here. Well, I've got additional perspective now that uh, there's been time for this information to be digested a bit further. I've got perspective from attorney John Deaton in this video. I've got uh, perspective from attorney James Murphy, who, by the way, this is so interesting to me. Uh, he called this judge a renegade judge, but not, not recently. Several months ago, I'll show you the specifics, but it was, it was several months or so ago, he called this judge a renegade judge and said, because mind you, the judge that, that said what, you know, what, what he said, um, he's in the same district as Judge Torres. And so he cited this one judge well before the conclusion of the SEC v. Ripple case. He cited this one judge that likes to go against other judges in the district. He just does that. There's this pattern that that attorney Murphy recognized. That's the one that said this, this against Torres. It's like he just wants to take whatever the, the position is and just ha have the opposite opinion and then argue that. Interesting stuff. This happens to be the one judge. I've also got perspective from um, Stuart Alderati, who, of course, is Ripple's chief legal officer, their top in-house attorney. But uh, before going further, I do want to be clear. I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. And so in, in a video I put out yesterday, I did note that despite this nonsense, and uh, despite the fact that the Bitcoin maximalists are getting off on this stuff here, uh, it doesn't change a damn thing. Judge Torres' ruling is the law of the land, and XRP is not a security. And I think the blockchain backer put it pretty well when this morning he stated the following on X, formerly known as Twitter. XRP is not a security, and no matter how much they try to FUD it, otherwise, it's listed everywhere. They are terrified. Spot on, blockchain backer. But still, you have uh, the XRP haters and then the people that just prop up the SEC no matter what. Uh, arguing what they're arguing. For instance, here's former SEC attorney John Reed Stark. I'm not going to read this whole mess that's on your screen here. This is a tweet from him, which I guess is just now known as a post. Um, if you want to, I'm scrolling down. So if you want to read this this long thing, feel free to like pause as I'm going down. But I'm just pointing out that people are jumping on this stuff, and it doesn't change a damn thing. XRP is not a security, and this judge on this particular point has a wrong opinion. Though the, the degree to which this uh, judge is saying wrong stuff is somewhat uh, somewhat disputed, and you'll, you'll see why I'm saying that as we go through. Um, some, Stuart already had some interesting take on that. Uh, so look at this. There's, a, there's a, an account here called Bitcoin Signal, and they wrote, XRP ruling rejected. Secondary market sales are also securities. And attorney John Deaton retweeted that. And that, by the way, that was a um, that was one of those Twitter spaces now known as X spaces, I guess. People can come and publicly speak in real time. And uh, attorney Deaton retweeted that and said the following. This is what you call flat out gaslighting or clueless on how to read a legal decision. Judge Torres's ruling never said secondary market sales are not securities. She only said what you must do. You must apply the Howey factors to each transaction of the asset when deciding whether there is an investment contract transaction or scheme. And I'll just pause and note, uh, Attorney Deaton goes on to articulate why, and it is something that I've highlighted on this channel, but I reflected upon that and I thought that, um, you know, I could probably, and I'm always striving to be as precise as possible in my language, but I'm a human, so like every human, we fall short. But I've, I recognize a spot where I, I think I could be more precise moving forward because I have at times articulated the, a, a particular concept by stating that secondary market tractions are, are not illegal securities transactions. Uh, but previously, I have reported that in instances, they actually can because you can still have an investment contract. More precisely, the idea that I was trying to get across is, is that they aren't inherently 
uh, illegal securities transactions. There's nothing about that that would necessarily, for example, as it pertains to XRP and Ripple, there's nothing about secondary market tractions that inherently would tie us as XRP holders, or purchasers rather, on secondary markets to Ripple. That's the idea I was trying to get across, but um, I, we can hone that in. I'm always striving to be as precise as possible. So it, it's, there's nothing inherent about that, but it's not the case that secondary market transactions um, if, if they're packaged in a certain way, those still could be, of course they could be. Any, any individual transaction with any underlying asset uh, could be part of a scheme that would constitute an illegal transaction, right? So I've always known that and I've, I've said that, but I just think at times I, I could, you know, and, and that's probably true of a lot of us. I think a lot of us in the community have been wording that way. So I just thought to point that out just so we can all try and be more precise. That's what I'm always striving for. But anyway, don't want to digress too much, but then attorney Deaton said, the correct answer under the law is a token sold in the secondary market off an exchange could be an investment contract. You don't know until you apply the Howey factors to the circumstances surrounding the sale. Judge Torres used a secondary sale of the Howey Orange Groves as an example. If the second purchaser bought, not from Howey, but from the first buyer, and was completely unaware of the Howey company, and all that was communicated during the, the second sale was, do you want to buy my acre of orange groves? Uh, and the second buyer said yes, and was planning on growing and selling the oranges himself. It is clearly not an investment contract. So, folks, that's the same same concept here as um, most first-time XRP holders, uh, first-time buyers. They didn't know XRP, or, or rather that Ripple existed. And which shouldn't be surprising, Ripple, United States company, uh, and then most, almost all of the transactions for XRP, including first-time purchasers, it's occurring outside the United States. So it's not surprising that they don't happen to know about this U.S.-based company. They know nothing about that. And so similarly here, if you're, you're buying this orange grove, which was initially part of it an, an illegal investment scheme, it, it was, that's what was ruled in 1946 by the Supreme Court. Well, if you're purchasing that, which was part of that, and you don't know anything, you say you don't even know W.J. Howey coexists. Well, of course, that's not now somehow some sort of illegal securities transaction. Same with XRP. And so that's what we're citing there. But there can be secondary market transactions in which, well, they're illegal. And so Attorney Deaton then says, on the other hand, if the first buyer tells the second buyer, buy this orange grove and the Howie company will do all the work for you, all you do is sit back and collect profits doing nothing, you might have an investment contract. That's not even controversial. I've never seen so much FUD over a simple legal ruling in my life. Spot on. And the reason you're seeing so much FUD, it, it's, and first of all, it's coming from, uh, you know, the crazy former SEC attorneys, pretty much, some of them crazy anyway, not all of them. Um, and, and then the Bitcoin maxis, that's, it's mostly from the Bitcoin maxis, frankly. And so we're seeing all this FUD, but it's because they despise this. And they're, they're just, they're prob some are probably feeling, uh, you know, tinges of embarrassment because they were wrong about this. But they just want to keep pushing their narrative because facts be damned, they want to be true what they want to be true. Reality be damned, right? And then here you have this, and this is so cool. Renegade judge, here you have attorney James Murphy, known as Meta Lawman on X. And he was on Brad Kine's YouTube channel. And this clip is from, uh, he said, oh, he said here seven months ago. Um, and it just goes 36 seconds long, but uh, I don't need to play it, but all you need to know is that he was literally seven months ago warning about this judge, his name's uh, John Rakoff. I believe his first name's John. Uh, John Rakoff. And he said this is a judge in the same district as Judge Torres, and um, he likes to just rule against other judges in the same district. And he noted that uh, he, he used to be practicing. This, the reason he can even articulate this is because he's not practicing there anymore, but he used to practice in New York. And so he'd be citing one judge who was in a courtroom with the other judge directly next to him in the same building, which I just thought was kind of fascinating. He's like, so yeah, not practicing anymore, so I'm just going to tell you, uh, this, this Judge Rakoff just likes to disagree uh, with, what, with, with all sorts of other people. So it makes me wonder if this is a guy that just wants to agree for the sake of disagreeing, just a disagreeable human and likes to argue with people and tell them they're wrong, rather than you know, engage in whatever is right and true. That's, that's alarming. But not every judge is a good judge. We're lucky we got Judge Torres for this, aren't we? So anyway, Attorney Murphy wrote the following while sharing that clip. Yesterday, Judge Rakoff disagreed with Judge Torres' Ripple decision. This is not a surprise. Seven months ago, I identified Rakoff by name as the judge most eager to disagree with a fellow judge from the same court. And I'll also pause to note here 
Attorney Deaton, while recognizing that you could have a judge, even in the same district, disagree with Torres, judges in general are not likely to do so. So the fact that there's this renegade judge that's been cited prior to the ruling even, uh, it, it, it kind of answers some questions to some degree, doesn't it? Don't you think? So judges in general, though, it's still the case that they're not that likely to go against Judge Torres. Not that it can't happen, it just did happen. But it doesn't mean that he's somehow right. Um, and then somebody named D.K. wrote to James Murphy, Attorney Murphy, and said, Also, he did not disagree, but sure, spin it any way you like it. Narrative is everything. Uh, well, Attorney Murphy thinks that that's not correct. He thinks that uh, the judge did disagree. And so he cited part of Rakoff's opinion, which reads as following, quote, The court, which means Rakoff, re rejects the approach recently adopted by another judge of the district in a similar case, <clears throat> SECV Ripple Labs, end quote. And then Attorney Murphy wrote, yes, I read that as a disagreement. And yeah, he's literally saying that he's rejecting the approach. That would be a disagreement, by definition, most, most certainly. Um, but it doesn't mean that everything is perhaps as terrible as it sounded on first read. So I have perspective now from uh, Stuart Alderati, this is Ripple's chief legal officer, um, Two threads. They're both really short. They both have three, uh, two or three tweets. First one has three tweets. It's from yesterday. So shortly after this news broke, these were initial impressions. And then, just this morning, Stuart Alderati thought about this a little bit further after um, giving the, the decision another read and came to a different conclusion after reading the, the same information a second time. So here was the initial reaction from yesterday, which um, wasn't out until after I had recorded my video on the topic. So I haven't gotten a report on this yet. Uh, Stewart wrote, let me be clear about some confusion going around. The ruling in the Terra case changes nothing about the Ripple ruling that XRP is not a security. Also, the Terra case is just starting, and that judge has to accept everything that the SEC alleges as true for now. Uh, our ruling came after a full factual record developed over two plus years was presented to the court. I'll let others dive into the Terra judge's comment, including his apparent misreading of the judge's, uh, Ripple judge's reasoning. <clears throat> Example, missing the point that... <clears throat> oh, excuse me. <clears throat> let me take a sip of water here. Sorry, folks. All right, all good. He says, I'll let others dive into the Terra judge's comment, including his apparent misreading of the Ripple judge's reasoning. Example, missing the point that secondary market traders can't invest money in anyone or anything if they don't know who they are buying from. Okay, that is spot on. Um, but he did have additional thoughts. So check this out. He retweeted his own thread, and this is just from a couple hours ago. Um, he wrote, on closer read, the terror judge actually agrees that orange groves alone are not securities without promises to cultivate the groves and share the profits. There needs to be an agreement between contracting parties for there to be an investment contract. Tokens alone that are not intermingled with other rights and promises are not themselves securities. The comment about the Ripple ruling is unnecessary, confusing, and non-binding. And there you go. And that last part's the most important. It's non-binding. It's just a thing this guy said. That's what he ruled on. It's, it's his opinion. Okay. Doesn't, doesn't matter. He wasn't our judge in this case. Thank God we didn't get that guy. Whew. Sounds like a piece of work. Renegade judge. We already warned about him. I, I hadn't been, I've been made familiar with I, I didn't see that clip. I didn't see that video. Uh, but it's interesting to know that there was a warning put out there. And uh, now you know, too, if you, had, if you didn't see that video seven months ago, now you know, too. Attorney Moore, M Murphy uh, was warning about this. And what do you know? That happens to be the one judge, at least to this point, that has spoken out against Judge Torres because reasons, it sounds. This is ridiculous. So either way... Um, Stuart Alder, I pointed out here, this is completely unnecessary and it's confusing. And Bitcoin Maximus, they can easily be confused. That's, the, that's what's making this worse. It's exacerbating the problem. I, just a lot of them are not particularly intelligent, you know, because they're a bunch of unsophisticated, knuckle-dragging, mouth-breathing troglodytes with cashew-sized brains. You know, can't even get their own damn shirts on in the morning. Wearing Velcro shoes. Because that's the only way they're going to get shoes on by themselves. That's for damn sure. Staying warm to the next to their dumpster fires under a bridge. Charging Bitcoin. People want to cross. Can take several days at times of high congestion. That's what they're doing. So you wouldn't expect them to be uh, engaging in, you know, any sort of genuinely interesting or complex intellectual thought, would you? You, you wouldn't really be expecting that. No, you wouldn't, you wouldn't. You wouldn't expect to see that. And it's not what we're seeing. 
These people suck. Damn trolls. <laughs> Bitcoin maxi trolls. But but also on top of that, even if they got it, I think so many of them are just disingenuous. They, they live in an echo chamber, chamber, they're ideologues, and they just want to be true what they want to be true, and they will assert things even if they know they're not true because they're damn liars. That's it. I just want to live in a world that's full of reality and like what is true. I just want to believe whatever's true. And these people are not helping the situation. <sighs> really grinds my gears, folks. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambeau.